I would like to welcome Tom Esten from Secure State and Josh Abraham from Rapid7, who are presenting real world web service testing for web hackers. Thank you. Yeah. Morning. All right. 10 a.m. at Black Hat. Everybody recovered, kind of, from last night. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, thanks for coming to the Rapid 7 party, right, Josh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. It was a great time. Yeah, we're all here. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Tom Esten. I'm a senior security consultant for Secure State. Um, my main focus is web applications and network pen testing. Um, those of you that know me, I'm founder of a website called socialmediasecurity.com. Um, I'm co-host of two podcasts. One of them is Security Justice, which we record in a bar, which is always awesome, and uh, the Social Media Security Podcast. And you can find me on Twitter as Agent Zero X Zero. So uh, I'm Josh Abraham. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I, I do uh, penetration testing. I also code in Perl. Um, you can find I code me in on Python. Yeah, whatever. Um, but can, I won't hold that against him. You can find me on Twitter at Jabra. Um, I do a blog. I contribute to a ton of various open source projects. Um, yeah, and I do a ton of other stuff. So it's cool. Uh, we are not Kevin Johnson. Uh, that's obvious. Uh, Kevin Johnson actually had to fly back for a family emergency, so he can't be here today. Um, but I definitely want to uh, note that Kevin Johnson contributed a ton to the research that we did. Um, if you don't know Kevin, um, he works for a company called Secure Ideas. Um, he is a SANS instructor. Um, he's founder of all kinds of different uh, open source projects, including Samurai, uh, Web Testing Framework, uh, Laudum, Weaponized Flash, and the list goes on. Uh, and he's a great guy. So, all right. So uh, the agenda for this court, for the uh, this whole presentation, um, in essence, what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, first the state of the union for pen testing web services. Uh, we found that there's you know consistently across uh, penetration testers and developers, it's sort of like a lacking uh, sort of standard. Um, so what we're going to do is to help clarify what are the problems with pen testing web services, and then building an agenda of what do you do to pen test web services, and going through that in more depth into improving the existing methodologies providing some tools, some useful techniques, um, and really just improving that whole process. So why do we want to attack web services, right? Hey, who's seen Flight, Flight Club? Awesome movie, isn't it? You're going to see lots of Fight Club references throughout this presentation, so just uh, giving you a heads up. <clears throat> well, web services really have become like a secondary attack vector. Um, there's, it's, it's funny, when you do a web, uh, just a regular web app pen test and you run across web services, either you either ignore them or you just forget they're there and you really don't want to do any kind of testing. But we've really found that, that uh, web services have become the bread and butter of an application. There's critical data that's running through these services and as pen testers we usually just ignore that fact. Um, and a lot of times we find that developers like any other web application, they don't implement proper security controls. Um, so we find that in web services. Um, they're always, um, the WSDLs and things like that are usually found outside of uh, the confines of the uh, safe and secure web application. A little bit of mic fail there. <laughs> Um, and so what we find is that developers kind of ignore that fact uh, and they don't put the proper protections around those services and endpoints. Um, and of course we always assume that the only client for a web service is another application. And of course you know what happens when we assume, right? Uh, the, other, the other thing to uh, consider when you're thinking about pen testing web services, uh, web services have been around for just as long as SQL injection, right? It's been around for a long, long time. But as an industry, uh, we're not very mature at you know, our process for going about testing those web services. So it's definitely an, a lacking element of the pen testing process. So we felt it was something to allocate some time for research, um, looking at improving the methodology, improving the testing tools, releasing some exploits, um, and just really just you know, raising the bar on the industry as a whole. Um, and a, a call to arms uh, for everybody who wants to help out and contribute because uh, we can't do this stuff alone. We've, we think that we've uh, improved the state of web application or web services testing uh, through our research, but we're asking everybody to help uh, contribute back and improve the, uh, the state of what we've done. 
So some recent statistics, um, uh, Kevin put this in here um, because he did a lot of research around mobile applications and web services. Um, and what we found is, uh, and Kevin is kind of a, um, an, an iPhone application addict, and he downloaded about 200 uh, iPhone applications, um, and he did some analysis on that, and he found most of those are using some form of web services. Um, ironically, none of them are using SOAP-based web services, but they're all using RESTful, uh, RESTful services like JSON. Um, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but you got to think about from the mobile space, I mean, this is huge. So we've got a ton of apps that are all using some form of web services in one form or another, um, and that's a huge increase. Ironically, this is from a, a Microsoft tag, which is Microsoft's implementation of 2D barcodes. Um, we don't have enough time to talk about that, but that's a whole other uh, issue in itself. Um, so starting out, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we have to talk about SOAP, and, and that's what we're doing for the essence of our talk. And the reason why we're doing that is because we've seen that a majority of the enterprise are doing the, uh, the web services uh, in, this, in this form of communication. And for those of you who aren't familiar with SOAP, it's basically a method of communication between uh, business to business communications using HTTP. Um, so it's, if you think about you know, the OSI layers, um, it's using you know, HTTP, so your, your common GET or POST request. Um, so the traditional method of representation for that data is a POST request and then the XML structure. And then the way that you can form that data uh, is called SOAP. And that's, and that's the way you understand a SOAP request. And it's, and it's large and it's a complex thing. Um, so that's, so that's SOAP. And what's interesting is we found, and just talking to developers, and in my job at Secure State, I do a lot of web application training, and I talk to developers a lot, and we're really seeing a departure from your traditional SOAP-based services to these more RESTful services like JSON. Um, so if you don't know what, what REST is, REST is representational state transfer, and it uses HTTP methods, so your get, post, put, and delete. Um, developers like using RESTful services because they're lightweight, they're non-complex, especially for mobile applications when um, you're talking about speed and a lightweight uh, you know, data transfer, uh, RESTful services are really the best, best thing for that. Um, however, um, what we find from an enterprise level is a lot of applications that are coded uh, to use web services by large corporations all use SOAP. Um, and it's extremely complex, and it's complex for a reason, and enterprise need that type of complexity. Um, and we can't forget about you know, large services, so like Amazon EC2, PayPal, Microsoft Azure, um, they all have SOAP-based APIs, and they are being used. So uh, the next thing that we had to do is we had to take a look at the, uh, the sort of the state of the union in terms of a threat model. Um, and what do we mean when we say, I'd like you to build me a secure web service? So the first thing that you would do for that particular organization is say, like, all right, well, you know, at a bare minimum, we need to have you know, some form of authentication and make sure that the data is encrypted between the various uh, you know, points of communication. So that's, that's sort of a bare minimum. Um, unfortunately, a lot of developers make a lot of assumptions and they say, well, no one's going to be able to intercept this traffic and they don't think about the threat agents who we are really concerned with. Um, so if you're inside an organization and if you're just transmitting information in clear text, uh, that's not an acceptable um, method for uh, implementing a, you know, a critical business uh, web service. Um, additionally, we found that you know, organizations would expose web services uh, with customer data on the internet. So that's also, uh, you know, if it's totally unauthenticated, that's totally unacceptable. I think that's uh, a great idea. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great idea. Like nobody's ever going to find it, right? Um, we've seen this, and uh, we want to make sure that people understand that if it's exposed to the internet, you've got to at least imp implement some form of authentication, because um, otherwise, you know, if, if it's accessible, um, anyone can access it. You shouldn't assume that you know, no one's going to find it or no one's going to know how to communicate with this web service just because it's a complex thing. Um, so definitely implementing some form of authentication, um, authorization, uh, and going through the various levels. Um, and there was a great resource, uh, if you go back, um, it's called the, uh, the Hacking Web Services uh, book. Um, and he goes through a you know, specific in-depth uh, threat model. So what we've done is we've taken the threat model that he provided um, and done additional research on other attack vectors in the industry and sort of combined those. And, and if you take a look at our white paper, um, I think it'll be very interesting for a lot of people. Open a lot of eyes for developers. Um, and additionally, uh, there, there's some other things uh, to just keep in mind. Um, because there's a lot of different complexities with these web services. Um, so we can't go through every, every attack vector in depth. But uh, the next slide here, what we're talking about is, uh, you can see over here when we have uh, these various nodes, so node one and uh, node five right there. Um, so if you're communicating between these different endpoints, uh, there's no form of uh, assurance that you can provide 
um, if you're only using SSL between the nodes, right? It only protects the information in transit, right? So it doesn't do anything for the data once it's on a particular endpoint. So for SOAP request, right, it goes from node one to node two, node three to node, you know, keep going. Um, so if you have a malicious user at one of those, you know, intermediate endpoints, uh, they could potentially modify the data, retransmit the data, that sort of thing. So you need to be aware of that type of risk um, because SOAP, uh, unlike traditional web applications where it's just a request and then response, uh, you're thinking more like email where it's being transmitted, there's an envelope and it's being sent to multiple endpoints. So this is, this is the way that uh, web service is a little bit different than traditional web applications. Um, and we need to understand this vector and explain it to developers. Um, so they need to understand this type of threat. So uh, from the State of the Union with all this stuff, um, based on our research, we really found a problem with all of these different things. So from, from scoping out a web service pen test or an engagement to the tools that we use, to the testing process, the methodology, uh, techniques, education for developers, testing environments, it's basically all broken is what we found. So the first thing, uh, what it comes down to is, is in one of the biggest piece is how do you scope these things? So as a pen tester, I need to ask the right questions to the client of, you know, what kind of service is this? Um, give me documentation, give me, you know, usernames, passwords, authorization. I need all of this stuff before I even begin any kind of testing. Um, but how do you, you know, how do you even begin this stuff? Um, you know, for, for a pen tester that maybe has never seen a web service or um, actually gone down to research it themselves, it can be very challenging because it's quite different than a traditional web application uh, if you're doing that kind of testing. Uh, then it comes down to, you know, how do I test this? So we've got automated versus manual testing. Uh, the automated testing right now um, that we've seen really is just very poor. Um, probably not much better than the uh, regular web app uh, scanners that we see. Um, but, you know, it, it's just not very good. Uh, and then you have to consider what kind of test, right? So black versus gray versus white. All of these things have different challenges when you're testing web services. So one of the main problems with the existing tools and techniques, that sort of thing, is that the automated tools aren't doing as, as good a job, so a lot of the work is manual, right? Going through and pen testing a web service is mostly manual. You're having to create a lot of tools yourself to, to interact with these customly designed applications. So that, that's one of the trends that we're seeing. And so when it comes to the methodology, um, you know, as web app pen testers, uh, probably the, the uh, gold standard, as I'd call it, is the OWASP web service te or the OWASP uh, testing guide uh, for web apps. Um, there is a web service section in version three, um, but it's really outdated. Um, in fact, I talked to one of the authors, and he was very pleased that uh, we were doing more research in this area because even he said that um, it needs a complete revision. Um, so it, things that it's missing. So uh, in our new new methodology, we were addressing things such as man in the middle attacks, client side storage, host-based authentication. Um, we're talking about newer technologies like WCF um, and things that uh, multiple protocols, you know, SOAP over TCP, all kinds of things that just aren't addressed in the, uh, the original testing guide. And also web management interfaces, which is another common interface for Which is a key point of our talk today. <laughs> So current tools, um, they, they just suck. I mean, let's be honest, right? Um, we've got lots of different tools that are out there um, for SOAP-based testing, um, but a lot of these are focused on functional testing for the developer. Uh, SOAP UI is a great example of that. Um, we, just, we just saw with the latest version of SOAP UI, they've added some basic security checks now into that, um, but literally that's just a month old now. Um, so even these commercial tools and things like that are now just starting to address the issues of security and web services. Um, there's very little automation, so we find that uh, Jabra and myself are writing custom scripts and custom tools for engagements, and that takes time, and that takes billable hours, and you're not really providing a lot of value to the client when we have two or three days to do a web service pen test, and two of those days I'm writing a tool, I'm writing a script. Uh, and and not do, everyone's do a coder, right? right? Not everybody at the end of the day can sit down and bang out some code on the command line. Um, in theory, everybody, you know, as a pen tester, should have those sorts of abilities, in my opinion, but not everybody is there. So right. We want to. Yep. So we find a lot of things with missing features, missing functionality, and of course, community support. A lot of these tools just are not open source. You can't contribute. You can't add your own plugins, and it becomes a problem. So, you know, tools, existing ones like Web Scarab, um, WS Digger, these are kind of like your de facto go to tools for web service testing. Um, web Scarab, um, they actually are depreciating the web service testing module for whatever reason. That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but it's not getting any attention anymore. And that's what we're finding in a lot of these tools.
And of course, web service or SOAP messages written by hand. That's your favorite. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> if, you're, if you're talking about developing any sort of tool to interact with it, you know, an, a web service, that sort of thing, one of the ways that I've seen a lot of people do it is to just build the SOAP, SOAP message by hand. But if you think about that, you're constructing SOAP which is not meant to be written by a human. It's supposed to be you know, written and constructed by a computer and then processed by a computer, so it doesn't real make any sense whatsoever. Um, so doing that sort of thing in a, in a pen test, it, it just doesn't make sense. Exactly. It doesn't scale the way you want it to. Right, so here's, here's kind of uh, you know, a screenshot of a couple of the tools and some of the, some of the issues. You know, I don't know really anybody that uses a web proxy anymore, to be honest. Um, kind of burp is the uh, de facto standard in a lot of pen testing, but uh, it's still out there. I'm still just kind of upset that they're actually depreciating a, a pretty decent model module that it was at one time. It should be improved and not removed. WS Digger, everybody sort of this, right? Um, you know, the problem with this is like simple things, like it doesn't support SSL. It's like, what the hell? Why wouldn't it support SSL? Everything is pretty much SSL now. So uh, this tool is pretty much useless nowadays. WS Scanners is another one that actually is pretty good, uh, but the problem with this is, and again, just kind of showing you the issues with the tools that we have, um, this version only supports .NET Web Services. So what about everything else? Um, you know, it's, we're limiting ourselves to specific things, and if I'm doing a pen test on a non.NET web service, this is pretty much useless. So currently what we're using, uh, our existing process and methodology, um, when we're interacting with the web service, what we'll do is we'll use something like a SOAP UI or a customly built uh, Perl or Ruby or Python script, that sort of thing, and then bootstrap it into something like Burp Suite. And then from there, leverage you know, the various elements inside of Burp Suite to interact with and fuzz and repeat all of those requests. Um, there's several problems with this technique, but that's pretty much what we're using. Um, it, it's, you know, it gives us something that works. Um, there's, there are definitely limitations there. Um, for example, um, if, if you want to do something uh, outside of that or if you want to script something, you got to do a lot of manual work. Um, but luckily, Burp is an HTTP proxy, so it works. Yeah, Ken Johnson, if you, if you know him, he's done some really good research and uh, some good, he's built some plugins for Burp that basically take like the functionality of SOAP UI and build it into Burp Suite. Um, definitely go check out that, that article, the SOAP attack. Um, it's really good stuff, so he's, he's done some good work in that area. Yeah, the, the, pro the problem with the plugin, though, is again, Again, you're, you're customizing something and you're requiring the pen tester to write code during the engagement, right? That's probably not the most effective use of their time uh, for any pen test, right? Yep. Um, if you're, if you're you know, sitting down to write some code, you either, either better be a really, really good pen tester, um, you have a large scope, or you can get the job done really efficiently. Um, but you know, there's, there's definitely going to be a trade-off between uh, you know, the value add versus you know, the time spent. Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, so we felt that we should just, uh, you know, work towards improving that. Uh, so here are some screenshots. This is just uh, a screenshot of SOAP UI. And what we've done is we've configured it to use the Burp Suite proxy, just localhost 8080. Uh, and since Burp Suite works, you know, HTTP, from there we can uh, leverage the intruder. So we'll intercept one of the SOAP requests. Uh, and then we can forward this over to the uh, interceptor, uh, the repeater, and that sort of thing. And then just start to look at the responses from the SOAP request. So you see right here, we're passing a value, um, and we can add um, you know, the, the elements that we want to fuzz test uh, inside of the request. So uh, another problem we found is uh, testing environments. So, um, you know, hey, I, I got this awesome tool, I got this awesome script, and um, where do I test this thing? Well, you know, I'll just find some production environment sitting out there on the internet and test that. Wait, no, that's illegal. I'm not going to do that. Um, well, I'll just build my own testing environment. So I'll build myself a, a web service. Um, well, that's great, but I just built a web service that isn't vulnerable through like Visual Studio or something. That, that's not going to really work for me. So um, we find a challenge, and this is really kind of across the industry, and, and there's been great things to address this, like damn vulnerable web app and uh, you know, purposely vulnerable systems that we can go after and test these things. Um, but there's really nothing out there for web services. There's, you know, web, WebGoat had kind of a little bit of a, a, a vulnerable web service uh, kind of there, but it really was just a very basic type of uh, yeah. vulnerable web service. When you think about pen testing web services, there there are a whole lot of different vulnerabilities in those web services, like um, you know, command injection, you know, SQL injection, these types of things. We're not seeing those as publicly available. So there's sort of like a you know a huge gap of we want vulnerable web services for various things. We want you know cross-site scripting, you know, command injection, SQL injection, that sort of stuff. And as a tester, you kind of want different skill levels too. So um, the nice thing that, that Kevin has developed is a set of open source uh, vulnerable web services that's going to be part of a uh, damn vulnerable web app um, that you can download for free and test all your tools with. And we'll show some screenshots of that in a bit. 
So what are we going to do about all these problems? Well, the first thing is we need to address the methodology. So um, of course, like I mentioned, that the OWASP testing guide was a great start. Um, and for the next version coming out, we're going to be contributing a uh, me new methodology that's going to be based off of PTES. So if you don't know what that is, um, that's kind of a, a thing in the security community right now. It's called the uh, Penetration Testing Execution Standard. Um, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that. That's an entire talk in itself. Just ask Chris Nickerson, um, who's really kind of heading this, this movement here, um, defining what a penetration test is uh, versus the infamous uh, vulnerability assessment. So um, this is really your standard when it comes to any penetration testing, um, and it makes a nice alignment for what we're trying to do with the web service testing method methodology from a high level. So what, one of the nice things about, since we're, we're uh, sort of aligning our methodology with PTES, is that what you're going to be able to have as an industry is eventually we're going to get to a state we're going to be able to say, here's what a pen test is, here's what a vulnerability scan is, here's what a web application assessment is, and here's what a web services assessment would be. I think that that for me is like a, where we need to be as an industry, because um, right now it's sort of like a combination of you know, a lot of ambiguity. And the idea behind uh, the PTES is to help uh, you know, make this clear, what do I mean when I say I, I want a penetration test? That's what it is. It's not a vulnerability scan, it's not a web app assessment, it's, it's just a penetration test. So, so from a high level, the methodology really starts with your pre-engagement interactions. And this, to me, is really one of the most important aspects, is asking the right questions, defining goals, defining, defining the type of assessment, and of course, your rules of engagement. And from there, it goes down to your intelligence gathering. So you want, you want to identify your WSDLs, your endpoints, any WS security controls, authentication credentials, and, and things like that. Um, and also, of course, your web service interfaces, which Josh is going to talk about in a little bit, uh, of why that's a critical component of doing any of these types of uh, engagements, um, as you'll find out that these web service interfaces uh, are extremely vulnerable. Um, and then some threat modeling. This is something that pen testers traditionally haven't really done in a methodology, but you need to identify you know, what is most valuable from a business perspective with the data that's going through these web services. Uh, is this critical business data um, and identifying that? And then you have to come up with scenarios and um, you know, some threat modeling to determine what types of attacks um, and what are realistic attack vectors? Um, so should I even test for man in the middle? Should I even do client-side attacks and things like that? What type of attack vector are we most concerned with as a business, right? Are we yep. concerned about an int internal attacker? Or are we concerned about somebody who's on the internet just scanning the internet blindly as a, you know, somebody from China or Russia, that sort of thing? Yeah, a web service that's only accessible internally on a network versus one that's accessible from the internet has a completely different threat model. Or another web service or multiple web services that communicate with multiple third parties, right? So if you have multiple vendors involved, completely different threat model than something that's only internal, right? It, it, it just, uh, you have to customize the threat model to map to the organization. So the next phase is obviously you have your vulnerability analysis. So this is where you need to do authentication testing, things like transport layer uh, testing, um, analyze client side applications, which I'll talk about in a little bit here with Silverlight. Um, and then of course the, the fun part, right, the exploitation phase. So um, looking at the XML structure, fuzzing content, your man in the middle testing, um, using uh, the new MSF web fuzz module, which Jabra is going to demonstrate for us here in a little bit. Post exploitation, can't forget about that. You know, what happens after you have that shell that we all like? Um, what can you do? And, and you can get shell through a web service, which uh, Josh will also demonstrate. Um, do your documentation, and of course, your reporting, which is, of course, that's what the client is paying for. Uh, the full methodology is very detailed, and it's in our white paper. Um, it's going to even be further detailed um, when it's put into the OWASP testing guide, where we're going to do examples and walkthroughs and things like that. So there's more to come with that. So um, I, we wanted to pull out a slide here, um, and Josh, you know, I, I know you want to talk a little bit more about scoping uh, and why this is so important. Um, but not a lot of pen testers ask the right questions when we're talking about this stuff because web services are extremely complex. So you need to be asking questions such as what type of framework is being used, the type of services, the data, um, all WSDL paths and endpoints, authentication, do these things uh, accept SOAP attachments, um, and of course providing multiple SOAP requests that are valid so we can show, see the full functionality really saves a pen tester time when we're doing a good Hang assessment. On One thing, if I'm doing a web app pen test, right, and I'm going through it and I'm just pen testing this web app, right, and all of a sudden I see that there's some web services, oh, is that in scope? I mean, right. like, I didn't even ask any of these questions. Right. So, you know, in that sort of scenario, that's probably for me more common, right? When we're doing yep. a web app pen test and all of a sudden I see, ah, oh, this thing is making a whole lot of bunch of additional requests to this other thing, I take a look, ah, let's see, hmm, it seems like it's SOAP. Well, that's a ton of more additional uh, attack surface that I need to pen test, right? I need to go in there and 
you know. So when you're doing any type of web application assessment, you should be asking, do you use web services? Right. Fingerprinting. Yeah, so uh, in terms of fingerprinting, uh, we put together uh, a little bit of uh, Google dorks here for anybody who's going after an organization. They might have the exposed, um, you know, various, various uh, different types of uh, file types. So these basically map back to the different languages that are being used. Um, and commonly what we're seeing in the industry is Microsoft or Java, that sort of thing. Um, so from there you'll see uh, ASMF, uh, which is commonly used for Microsoft, uh, and that sort of, you know, maps back to their technologies. And from there, what we can do is we'd be able to enumerate the WSDL. And the WSDL is basically the data definition of how you represent a SOAP request. So it provides a little uh, guidance for you know, the tools as well as the pen tester to be able to construct those SOAP requests. The problem is that if you only have the WSDL, you don't have valid data to transmit to this web service. And that's one of the things that we've included inside of our white paper, that we wanted sample uh, web services request with valid data to be able to enumerate and look at uh, valid requests because I don't I, I can see a you know a particular uh, you know value that is supposed to be sent here I know it's an integer um, but I don't know a valid uh, integer to be transmitted so it sort of helps to uh, you know reduce that ambiguity um, and additionally what we did was we did a couple Google searches here we can see the numbers um, and if you guys just want to look at those it's uh, it's pretty shocking when you, when you think about it, uh, because in terms of the industry, uh, we need to make sure that we're looking at this sort of stuff, and we need to make sure that we're pen testing it, um, because they're definitely out there. Um, so the next bit here is... Uh, is that your password? <laughs> that's, Yo. That's not my password. <laughs> right. So uh, one of the things that we are seeing a lot of in the industry um, is default, reused, and weak passwords, right? For most organizations, this is going to be their biggest risk, right? Um, we're, we're talking a lot about web services testing, um, but for organizations uh, who haven't done the most basic thing, like a password audit, that sort of thing, um, definitely want to do that sort of thing because that's, you know, that's, that's where your biggest risks are. Uh, weak default reused passwords, uh, if you think about attack vectors like pass the hash, right? You get local administrative access on a workstation. You reuse that credential across the network, or you set up you know, various interfaces, web applications. Developers do this all the time they'll leave in a blank password or you know, configure a password the same for the production, development, and testing environments. So if you find that one developer box, try that password on production. If it works, there you go. Um, so if there are web management interfaces and they are potentially exposed to the internet, those would be the ideal targets. You can forget about all your pen testing with SOAP because it's a hard thing to do anyway. We can just go after some of these web interfaces. Uh, and one of the things that we saw last year was uh, SAP Business Objects had a web management interface which was exposed uh, for a lot of our customers and we wanted to make sure that everybody understood that risk because the default username and password which provides remote code execution on the internet is not acceptable. So we wanted to uh, raise awareness there. It isn't, really? <laughs> no, it is I not. Like, I like remote code it's execution not, It's not acceptable. Um, so access to, uh, was a, it's a default um, credential admin access to, um, and that was incorporated into business objects, uh, and they, didn't, they forgot to change the password there. Um, so that was, that was the problem that we saw. So we were able to get code execution through REST or SOAP, um, because there were two different interfaces. For SAP business objects, it was only through um, the SOAP interface. So that was, that was the distinction there. Um, and now we're going to talk about another uh, web uh, management interface known as Glassfish. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Glassfish is similar to like a Tomcat manager and Access2, but there's a whole lot more functionality. Um, it came from uh, the Sun organization, later purchased by Oracle, um, and they've done some, some work in improving it. Um, so recently what we've seen is, uh, you know, it's kind of easy to enumerate, right? It runs on a unique port, 4848, so it's real quick to find it with an NMAP scan, right? If it's exposed to the internet, you know that, uh, you know, that's a, that's a nice uh, potential win for you. Um, and then if you look at attack targets, um, here's, what's, uh, here's what's out there, right? We see that there's uh, several different versions, right? They have Sun Application 9.x, uh, and then the older versions of uh, the application, you know, Sunglass Fish 2.x, um, those, were, those were vulnerable to several, several different attack vectors, uh, one of which was published in April of this year, uh, where there was an authentication bypass, uh, and the details of which were, you know, relatively straightforward, but all you had to do was to transmit, like, a GET request and just use a lowercase uh, GET, right? So G-E-T, all lowercase, or POST, all lowercase. 
and you could bypass authentication. Um, and it was, you know, it's a known CVE, so it was released on the industry. Um, yeah. The other thing that we found was that um, they also had a documented uh, username and password for the, uh, the latest release. Um, so if we, can, if we can go to the, uh, uh, oh yeah, we're gonna get into the enumeration. So who loves Shodan? So first, uh, <laughs> how many, how many uh, systems are exposed on the internet? So there's a, a large number of systems exposed on the internet. Um, so you have authentication bypass as a potential, uh, default credentials as a potential, um, or in the later versions, uh, they had actually changed the password from uh, what, what Sun had used was admin admin. Um, in the later versions, there's a, a blank password. What, what I also find fascinating too is that developers really have no idea that this stuff is even exposed and they have no idea how it's configured because developers aren't the people that are doing the server configuration uh, for the web services. It's usually a network team or a server operator, somebody like that, uh, that uh, will configure this stuff. So, and they usually just don't even care if it's a default because um, who wants to change defaults, but, right? But more so than that, right? If a developer or some sort of group uh, deploys the, uh, the web uh, management interface, how is the security professional supposed to know that there is you know, a weak username and password uh, installed in this management interface? How are they supposed to understand the risk associated with that interface, right? Um, in, in theory, we would want to have them change it, um, but if they're even unaware of that sort of thing, you know, they're never going to understand the implications. So here we see the documentation. Um, and as you can see, um, they've documented that there's a blank password. Um, so they've said, you know, obviously they want you to change it. Um, what we've found is we can, we can leverage the application um, to gain remote code execution, and that's what we're going to show in the demo. Uh, so as a complete set of, uh, you know, attacking Glassfish, um, I worked with a few other guys uh, who helped and contributed to the Metasploit uh, project um, to build uh, sort of like an Uber module for attacking Glassfish. What it does is it enumerates the version, uh, and then if it's uh, Oracle uh, Glassfish or you know, whatever, whatever version it is, it'll use several different attack vectors. So it'll do authentication bypass on the earlier versions that were vulnerable. And if those don't work, it'll use default credentials, either, either in 2.x or in 3.0. Uh, so the Sun application uh, 9.x, I didn't, I didn't get the uh, default creds working there, but authentication bypass should work for you in every time. Uh, so we're gonna do the demos at the end but you know, in essence, this will be, uh, you know, when you're a pen tester, right, you, you always go to these common attack vectors, these common attack patterns that you see most organizations have. Uh, so this will be one for the industry. It'll be one of those Tomcat manager you know, default credentials uh, that everyone's gonna use, so. So uh, other types of attack services that we're seeing, um, Microsoft Silverlight is, is an interesting animal in itself. Um, we run into these all the time on Pentest now where a, a Silverlight application can uh, access web services um, all through uh, WCF, which is Windows Communication Foundation. Um, so this is a newer technology that we're seeing more enterprises jump on um, because it's pretty, it's, um, it's, everything's processed on the client side and all you have now is these web services that are exposed. Um, what we found is basically you could just disregard these app files and just interact with the web services themselves. So in terms of Silverlight, really um, the problem becomes you have to secure the web services themselves. The client application really is useless at that point. Um, and there are some security concerns with the client application. Um, I believe another gentleman was doing a good talk on that yesterday. Yep. Um, and definitely check that out. But uh, in terms of the web services, um, those are exposed and they need to be secured. Uh, so oh, just, just go back to a quick second. Um, one of the things that I've seen a lot in the industry is when you know, you're pen testing a web app or you know, you're looking at you know, communicating with this web application, all of a sudden, you know, you know, the, the flash you know, object or you know, Ajax just starts making all these various calls to web services, right? So that's, you know, as an industry, we, we don't really have the maturity to basically say like, all right, that needs to be clearly defined and in the pre-scope, but if it was missed, then you should have to start thinking about, all right, well, we just expanded the attack surface, so I need to designate some time to making sure that we're pen testing that. Uh, additionally, if you think about it, well, what about uh, a, a, an Ajax request that's making requests inside of the DOM, right? So now you're gonna make requests, you're gonna need Firebug, you need to go through all of those different communications, um, and potentially that could be outside the proxy, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult um, because when it's inside the proxy, at least you can put it into the intruder and start doing fuzzing and that sort of thing. Uh, if it's inside a Firebug, you have to just, you know, you have to verify and you have to double check for that sort of thing. So definitely wanna make sure that you guys are aware of, you know, the potential for extended, um, you know, extended attack surface via, you know, Ajax, Flash, Silverlight. 
So uh, the new web service attacks, um, there's a great website, um, wsattacks.org by Andreas Flackenberg. Um, he has cataloged pretty much most, if not all, of the current attacks um, using modern SOAP and Beeple web services. Um, it's an ex excellent piece of work. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to uh, get Andreas to contribute this material back into the OWASP testing guide instead of referencing it as a third party, because it's already in a wiki format, which is great. Um, but he's done a lot of great work with this. He's taken a lot of the things from the detailed technical white papers uh, that are out there from like educational institutions and things like that, uh, where people have done a ton of research on web service attacks, and he's documented that very well. Um, so uh, definitely we have referenced this in our methodology uh, because we feel it's important to sh document all the different types of attacks that are out there. Beeple. Right. Yeah, so he mentioned, <laughs> he mentioned the word Beeple, and I think for the industry, or at least for the security community, um, Beeple is definitely not something that you know, a lot of people understand. Even on the developer side, it's, it's you know, very, very difficult and complex. Um, the idea here is if you think about you know, how do you determine, if you have multiple web services, right, um, and you want to represent how one web service would communicate with another, well, one way to do this is using Beeple. And what it does is it allows for you to put uh, the application logic or you know, construction of communication from one web service to the next inside of an XML document. So just think about the potential there. You could have multiple web services, each communicating with different web services, all represented inside of XML. And it, you know, in essence, would be uh, exactly what we're talking about when we talk about pen testing uh, application logic. Uh, the unfortunate thing is that when you think about pen testing web services, uh, as an industry, we don't have a good process for doing that. Now just add people, and you think right. about expanding to multiple web services. And how do you represent that, and how do you, how do, you do that? It's, it, it's a problem that very few people can even um, you know, combat. And from a technical aspect, you really have to understand the business logic. So, I mean, we always uh, talk about, you know, initially like in gray box testing, we're looking at the business logic of the application to find those flaws that only a human can find. Um, but Beeple really takes it to a whole other level. Uh, and that's where we see, you know, a white, bo white box approach being used where there's got to be a lot of documentation and communication with the developers to truly understand the business purposes for those. Yeah, right now I would say that the best way to understand, you know, what the potential threats in a, you know, Beeple or web services, that sort of thing. Uh, when you get to this level of complexity, you almost have to be sitting with the developers, having them explain to you what did I want to do, what is this thing supposed to do, um, and how does it work, and have them walk you through it, because otherwise there's, no, there's not going to be any really way that you can give them any assurance as to this application being any sort of uh, secure, safe, or you know, any terms of good security. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that we did in addition to the, uh, the pen testing, uh, the glass fish, and that sort of thing. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was to, uh, to release some, uh, some other Metasploit tools, one of which was called uh, the MSF Web Fuzz uh, and MSF Web Repeat. And the idea here was uh, inside of Metasploit, you have the ability to make you know, various you know, HTTP-based requests. Um, well, we wanted to make it easier for somebody to do like a fuzzer and a repeater, similar to Burp Suite. But if it's inside a Metasploit, then it would make it accessible to reuse the existing payloads and that sort of functionality. So one of, the, one of the problems with using Burp Suite is that you don't have that ability built in, right? You have to go back to either like a, a booby or, or something like that, um, the work that uh, you know, Ken Johnson has done. Uh, it's been excellent. Um, but integrating inside of Metasploit um, so that you can get all those payloads that you were looking for, right? You don't have to go back to Metasploit or use an API, that sort of thing. It can all be done inside of one tool. Um, so that's one of the things that we definitely wanted to do. Um, and then also releasing several libraries. Uh, and these, these are considered alpha code, so it's, they're, not, they're not ready for you know, everybody to, you know, to use tomorrow. But I, I would say that they're, they're ready enough for every, you know, everybody to take a look at and start play with uh, in a development environment or, or a lab environment, that sort of thing. Um, and it provides uh, you know, authentication, the ability to access the web service and communicate with a proxy. So if you want to use Burp, you can do that. Um, Burp is one of my favorite proxies. Um, and additionally, what, what this allows for um, is a sort of like a call to arms for the industry. Uh, we need to have better tools for web services testing, um, and I thought that adding web services testing into the Metasploit framework was a great, yeah, a great way to do that. All right. So we were, we were going to do the, all the demos at the end, so we want to keep going. 
So uh, we mentioned earlier about um, the vulnerable web services that Kevin Johnson uh, created um, for the uh, damn vulnerable web application uh, by Ryan Dewhurst. Um, definitely, if you haven't checked out this project, I highly recommend you check it out. Either go to his website and download it, or you can uh, automatically play with it in uh, the Samurai uh, web testing framework, which is a live CD um, that has all of this stuff ready to go, configured, just boot it up, put it into a VM, and everything's ready for you. Um, so Kevin's put a lot of work into this, and um, this really provides a series of different services to test um, with lots of different um, you know, attack vectors. So um, it does, if you're familiar with Damn Vulnerable Web App, it uses its authentication backend to access the services, so you can do it with auth uh, if, you, if you prefer. Um, there's also high, medium, and low vul uh, vulnerabilities, which is nice. So um, if I just want to test for a basic SQL injection, I can kind of advance to higher levels um, as well as cross site scripting and lots of different uh, types of attacks uh, within the web services. Um, there's a WSDL available for each of the services, um, and of course it's extendable because it's open source, uh, which is great. So if you know a little bit of PHP, uh, you can uh, code your own or add to the, the framework itself. And, and one of the reasons why we wanted to contribute back to Damn Vulnerable Web App is because we wanted it to give it back to the entire community, not just one, another open source project which gets you know, <laughs> written and then you know, you know, developers or researchers, they sort of they move on and they do something else. That way everybody in the industry can have this code, they can improve it, um, and we don't have to see another you know, new you know, Damn Vulnerable Web Services different project. We'd like to see this sort of stuff uh, combined because we think that uh, better projects um, with better content is, is a, b a better way to approach the problem. Um, so, you know, in essence, uh, we've gone through, uh, Kevin, Kevin wrote all the, uh, the, you know, the damn vulnerable web services. Uh, so the first one was the, uh, the SQL injection, right? And we have the three different levels, um, but in essence what we're doing is you're making a, uh, a request to the database on the back end and then you're doing SQL injection. So, you know, verifying that sort of thing. Um, should be relatively straightforward. Anybody who's familiar with SQL injection, you can, you can leverage the existing uh, tools um, or you can use the new stuff that we're releasing for Metasploit um, to interact with and communicate with these web services and demonstrate that you can test uh, your current processes for pen testing web services. Uh, the next one is the command injection. Uh, so this is you know, one of the parameters, allows you to execute commands on the server. Uh, that's what we're going to use to demonstrate uh, how do we get um, interpreter shell on the system, you know, just upload a PHP backdoor um, and then execute it on the system. Uh, the next was uh, the cross-site scripting, persistent cross-site scripting. So how this works is you transmit an encoded value containing, you know, the, job, the JavaScript that you're looking for. So do a script source include and then your, you know, your beef hook or that sort of thing. Uh, and then from there, what, what the web application will do is to pull that information back and present that to the user. So we'll get persistent cross-site scripting via web services. This is a, an interesting attack because sometimes we find web services that feed back into the application to display data back to the user. Um, and that's what's very interesting about yeah. testing for this. Like one, one, one great example, uh, I was doing a web application assessment uh, and we found the username and the password was logged uh, to administration uh, database, right? I mean, you're, you wanna see who tries to log in. Well, if you insert a username of JavaScript, script, you know, alert or, you know, whatever, whatever you're looking for, right there, the admin goes to log into this web management interface, bingo, persistent cross-site scripting. So just think about, you know, cross-site scripting like this, or you could think about anywhere where you're trying to log in with a username and a password, right? So if that data is being fed back into a web management interface, you need to ensure that on the back end, that web app is not also vulnerable to persistent cross-site scripting, because the interface to it would be web services. So, uh, you know, to kind of sum, sum, summarize things, um, you know, we really just, this is kind of a call to arms for the security community. Um, we really want to pay attention to these new attack vectors um, and the new technology that's coming out. I mean, it's, it's rapidly changing, especially since we've adapted to, you know, mobile applications and all this new technology. Um, you know, WCF um, is, is really a big deal. I, I, hopefully we're going to see a lot more, um, you know, research coming out with the security of that, um, as well as uh, the issues that developers are finding themselves. Um, so consider this work that we're doing really only the beginning, um, but we need everybody to get involved, get involved with OWASP, get involved with open source projects, um, and of course, you know, try to get developers to do the same because it's important. Yeah, our original, our original problem was that as an industry, we have a, a, a real, I mean, we're really not mature in terms of pen testing web services, so we wanted to focus on this issue, uh, do some research together, um, but in essence, we can't solve this problem alone. 
So we need everybody to help contribute um, and give feedback, if nothing else, and test the tools and you know, provide some recommendations for how they can be improved. And the white paper's up, as well as um, you can download. Um, we'll have links to the, uh, in, the, in the Jobber's blog post yep. with the, uh, the modules to download yep. and test yourself. Um, and then you can now download uh, uh, the Envoy Web Service right now from Kevin's site at that link. So let's do some demos. Let's do some demos. That's why everybody's here, right? You guys came to see us talk or you came to see demos? <laughs> demos. All right. Um, so why don't we do the web fuzzer one first? All right. So I'm going to just walk through this. Um, I'm going to pause this real quick. Uh, so what I did was I wrote a tool called uh, MSF Web Fuzz. Uh, and in essence, this is just catting uh, one of the SOAP requests we've made. Um, and right here, you guys can see right in here, um, I have a, uh, a string, it's called fuzz, and then you just close the uh, particular parameter. I don't know if you guys in the back can see this. Uh, we're also gonna upload the videos uh, to the uh, exact same location that we have the white paper. Um, so if you guys wanna take that down. Um, additionally, we'll be posting all this stuff on Twitter. So if you guys just follow us on Twitter, you don't wanna write down all the links, you'll get it yeah. all that way. Um, but there's a particular parameter, it's called test, and this is the one parameter we're gonna be fuzzing, and we're gonna run through a fuzz file, so it's fuzz.txt, it has all of the injection parameters. So what we're gonna do is we're going to insert this into the tool, and then in the response, it's gonna look for regular expressions that would be consistent with you know, something that would be interesting to us to look at more manually, potentially SQL injection, code injection, that sort of thing. So this was the command injection, uh, damn vulnerable uh, web service uh, that Kevin wrote. Are the regular expressions you're using for analysis built into the tool or specified at runtime? Uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ability, we were actually talking about this last night, uh, to be able to take that from a file. Um, but right now it's built in, it's hard coded into the tool. I can make that. I, I knew about that and just didn't have time to fix it last night. It was that the rabbit seven part in, instead? I'm sorry? Yeah, I, I, I recorded the demo, uh, unfortunately, uh, but I'm going to upload these later. Um, in essence, what we've seen is uh, we inserted ID and we got back, um, you, know, you know, the command injection for ID. All right. So this one's a little bit better. This demo is, there you go, leveraging that same exact attack vector, um, and we're gonna get shell on the box. So the first thing that we do is we do MSF payload to generate a PHP interpreter shell, uh, and we store that as temp.shell.txt. And then I'm gonna just copy this into the web root on the attacker server. Uh, so copy shell.txt to the web root, and then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cat the, uh, the sample file so you guys can see what we're doing here. No tricks up my sleeve. All right, so it's gonna do a wget minus o, and then it's gonna sort as msf shell, and it just does wget on the you know, shell.txt. So this would wget it inside of the context of the damn vulnerable web service. It just so happens that that's gonna also be localhost. Correct. It's code injection via web services. So this was the, the example that Kevin released. Is there a reason why you chose Glassfish? Uh, Glassfish, it's... <laughs> well, JBoss, we are, yeah, I mean, we already have uh, several modules for pen testing JBoss. I mean, it's, it's been documented. There hasn't been anything with um, Glassfish yet. Yeah. In terms of the industry, we, we haven't seen much uh, towards Glassfish, the only recent thing that we did see was the authentication bypass. Uh, so here we're setting up the PHP interpreter uh, backdoor, uh, or the, uh, the PHP handler, running on 444. Uh, we make the request, and we're gonna be good. So here all we're doing is we're just doing the wget to request the MSF web shell, and then we'll get our PHP interpreter shell.
So there we go. We got a shell via the uh, the command in injection. All right. Now we're going to move on to the Glassfish demo. Uh, so this was the default credentials on the latest version of Glassfish. I figured that that would probably be the best example. Um, I also have one on the authentication bypass if we want to see that too. So here's uh, Oracle Glassfish 3.1 running. It's uh, the latest, uh, no updates available. This is July 26. And uh, the other thing we should mention is that the code for this module is checked into the Metasploit repository at 10.30. Um, so everybody can do an SVN update um, and you guys can get this code right now. That's because he's got connections. <laughs> I sort of know a guy. He knows this guy. His name I know starts a guy. with HD. So here it's just enumerating the version, right? And the version detection is really sophisticated. So this is cool. Depending yeah. on the version, it would actually attempt different attack vectors. Uh, so here we're just using the latest version. Um, so logging in, getting a shell, undeploying that vulnerable web service, and we're good to go. We can log in. We can we can do whatever, and it works on Linux, uh, on Windows, uh, whatever. Even works in Java, Java interpreter. So we're good. And go. Shell, latest version. Thank you. Um, and we can also do uh, Sun or uh, the uh, Sun application server. Um, so this worked as well. This was authentication bypass. So this was using the, uh, the lowercase HTTP verbs. Um, so you guys will see that the version detection doesn't attempt to do the uh, default credentials, um, it just does the authentication bypass. So Java Sun application server 9.1. Let me do authentication bypass. So the, for those of you who are interested in actually seeing the details of this particular module, I'm going to be doing a code walk at 2.30 uh, at B-Sides. Um, so feel free to come by. Shell, give me shell. <laughs> shell. That's that's the that's the part you wait for. Just give me the shell. <laughs> it's a VM. <laughs> oh, those silly VMs. If you guys have any there questions or anything, definitely uh, it's shell. stop up. There we go. We'll, we'll be here for a while. So, excellent. Undeploying, yeah. and we're good. Ooh. So, all right, guys. Thanks for coming. That's it. Questions? You can yep. just come on up. <laughs>